Welcome to live stream number 113. My name is Lars Christensen and today, well, as usual, it's all about Fusion 360. It is January the 4th, 2018. Oops, and I got sound. My name is Lars Christensen. Let's kill that. <laughs> here myself. Absolutely awesome having you here. Um, today's topic is all about how I use sketch constraints and dimensioning. Now, a few people have kind of asked me for best practices. That's what I'm going to share today. If you are fairly experienced in CAD, I would love if you would just hang on for the next 15, 20 minutes or so, and then give your input in the comments area of the video. Share the knowledge, right? If you have anything to add to it, anything you do different, whatever, um, let's make sure that we share some knowledge. That's what we're doing here. All about adding a little bit more value to your fusion experience. So, see, we already got a bunch of people in here. We got Tommy, we got David, Edward, Stefan, Bob. All you guys really appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking the time. So, enough of me talking. Let's talk a little bit about best practices when it goes um, with sketching, working with sketches, working with constraints. Uh, inside of Fusion 360. Now, I set Fusion 360 back to where it is when you first install it because I just want to kind of like, you know, if you are brand new, um, just at least be aware of the things that I normally change, not that you have to. <laughs> uh, there's kind of two things I change. One, I go up here to the view cube and I right click on it and I change orthographic uh, to perspective with all the faces on it about how you're looking at your part when you are looking at them in an angle versus uh, looking at them straight on. So I don't want to do that check. So right click and I move the check mark down to perspective with all the faces. The other thing I do is I go down here in the bottom, I click on the grid and uh, then I normally turn the layout grid off, uncheck that checkbox. And snap to grid, I will normally turn off too. But now somebody is like, well, wait a minute. What is all this doing? So layout grid, you will see that it just keeps a constant grid here. Now, if I turn it off, I leave snap to grid on just for a second. Let's go up and start a sketch here and just got started on some kind of a face. You will see that I do get a kind of grid uh, showing up here when I'm sketching and I actually don't necessarily mind that What this setting does is it will snap to this So if I go up and click on a line You will see as I'm hovering over one of the intersections of the grid my cursor changes to a little square see no square square no square square so snap to grid means that it's snapping to those intersections. There's a trick that if you hold down control on a Windows or Command on a Mac, you don't have to, I mean, this is just so you know, if you hold that down, then it will not snap. See, now I can move it around, it will not snap. I'm holding down control because I'm on a Windows machine. If I was on a Mac, then I would hold down Command, okay? So some people like to, that they snap into this grid. I find it kind of uh, annoying as I'm going to show you why just in a second. So I'm going to go down and turn that off. Okay. Now it will not snap to that. Okay. Um, so that is kind of like the base settings. Let's get into the best practices. First of all, you remember, if you're brand new, you can only, and I mean only, sketch on either a face or on a plane. That's the two only places you really will start out sketching when, when you're working inside of Fusion 360. A face or a plane. Now, when you're starting out in the beginning, and I just started sketched here. Um, let's get rid of that. Now, when you're starting out in the beginning in here, uh, ooh, video, well, video quality went bad. Make sure that you click that little gear icon right next to your in your video and make sure that you set it to a higher standard. Of, because this is streaming, 
uh, YouTube will automatically like constantly gauge things and try to make sure that you have a good resolution. All right, when you're starting out in the beginning, remember, face or plane. Well, you don't have a face because we don't have anything on the screen right now. It's all, it's all, um, you know, blank. So you will always start out. The first sketch will always be on one uh, on on one of these planes. Okay, so let's just kind of like uh, do that now. The next thing you have the origin right showing right here, and if I turn the light ball on over here, we kind of like also get um, the the planes showing up on on that origin. Make it a habit that when you start sketching out. And I'm, you know, this is like for the 90% of the normal scenarios. Make yourself a habit to start your first sketch on that that point. So if you're creating a line, you know, you should probably create your first line where you snap to to that origin. That origin is kind of like your place, uh, like the nail in space. Um, if you are doing a rectangle, two point rectangle, you might select that as your first area to create. Your rectangle like that, um, or if you are creating like a center rectangle, S key, and the center rectangle, uh, you know you can do that also. But make it a good habit that whenever you start sketching, make sure you snap your first sketch kind of like into um, into the origin. Now, the title of this video: How I use sketch constraints and dimensions. So the sketch constraints are these over here that kind of like controls our sketches and then of course uh, dimensions to kind of like lock it down. My rule of thumb is to start out uh, whenever I'm sketching something to first apply relations, the first the constraints relations and then the dimension second. Now not and I'm saying this with like one of these right um, but in general rule, think of getting your sketch constraints in first and then the dimensions afterwards. Because if you start out with the dimensions first, you have a tendency to throw a lot of dimensions on your part, what really makes it a pain in the neck many times to edit and, and things like that. So let's start sketching something up here and talk a little bit about um, some of these relationships over here, some of the ones that is important. So first of all, let me go up and click the line command and create the first line here. So we get kind of like the line command. Now, notice that when I go down and make it horizontal, you will actually see that, and I can't point at it, but a little constraint symbol in light blue will show up on the screen right when I'm horizontal. So Fusion will by default help you by applying uh, constraints. So here it would actually make sure that it gets a horizontal constraint on it. You will also see it if we just do a, a standard rectangle, and I'm just sketching a standard rectangle, you will see that we get the horizontal, horizontal, vertical, vertical constraint. So be aware that Fusion will put these on. Now, whenever we're talking about sketches, as some of you guys know, $500 state, make sure you get them fully defined. You need to make them completely black so we cannot uh, drag them like that. But you should be aware of that Fusion by default put constraints in to kind of like help you on your way. Undo is up here, by the way. So let's create a line, back to the line. It's gonna place it here. Now, as soon as it goes out here, you will see that it's ready to create another line. That is actually a little trick if you want to get into um, to arcs where you can create a tangent arc by, I'm still in the line command, by moving back to that original endpoint and then hold down your left mouse button and drag out and it will actually create a tangent arc from here. Uh, so that's a little trick where you can switch in the line command, you can create your line and then you don't exit out of it, you go back to it again, hold down your left mouse button, and you can actually create a, uh, a line like this. Now you will see that when I did that, I get this symbol over here, what is, in my opinion, probably the most important constraint in the world. That is tangency, okay? Now let me show you what if something looks like if it don't have tangency. If we click on it, we can actually delete it. So what happens is many times when we are sketching things up, 
is that if we create some lines like this and then maybe we go up here and we create a uh, three point arc something that goes over to here and give that an arc there and let's just continue with another arc that goes to here to there if you don't watch out there's no tangency here that is this tangency constraint here i deleted that and what makes make happens is that the scat starts you see how the arc is kind of like snapping on its own, like look at this mess right because there's no tangency on um on this so what i do as a rule is whenever i am i'm working with sketching something up if there's any arcs involved and there is no tangency on them make sure that's the first constraint you're putting in there so click tangency so like this line and this arc and they will now be tangent and now i can go i can make this line and uh, this arc and this arc tangent i still have a little bit of a a weird selection up here uh, but make sure that these are in here. So I will actually make a, um, an effort whenever I sketch something up, if I know that there was arcs in there, I would actually go in and make sure that all of these have a tangency on it. And if they don't, and they should have, I will go over here to uh, the constraints and apply it first. Um, so that is maybe, because if you don't, and some of you guys have tried this, if you don't, then you, you add a dimension to one of these sketches and they just completely blow up and you're like, ah, and it can be a nightmare to fix it. So that's, you know, I think one of the better tips I can share with you is I will actually make an effort going in there, make sure that all arcs have a tendency before I do really anything, anything else. Okay. Um, now, another thing that you will see, let me just get rid of this because this is kind of like a mess. Um, another thing that I you will see me many times do if you're watching the live streams is that I just sketch things kind of close to what I want without spending too much time of kind of get it right in the beginning. So just get something somewhat close to what you want. Just continue drawing this thing here. Um, because the wonderful thing, getting closed, is that you have these constraints over here. So I know people who spend a lot of time trying to get everything right, and then you know you're putting these constraints on anyways and dimensions. So just get it somewhat close, and then go in and start using uh, these different constraints. So um, what I want us to show you, if you go in here and look a little bit, is the um, horizontal vertical symbol. A little bit of confusion from a couple of people who's like, what do you mean? Why, you know, shouldn't that be one that is horizontal, one that is vertical? Well, it actually looks out for 45 degrees. What I mean by that is that if I create, um, well, if you're looking at this line right up here, this line right up here on the top, let me just get out of the command here. Um, this line here is closer to zero than it's past, I guess, 46 degrees. If I apply a constraint to this one, horizontal slash vertical, it will become horizontal, where this line is closer to 90 degrees than 45, so that will become vertical. Let me show you. If I click on this one here, that becomes vertical. Same command. I'm not changing anything that will become horizontal. So that's just one of these things. If you're fairly new, there's a little confusing. Why the heck uh, does it work like that? But this one here will literally look at if you have uh, below or over 45 degrees and, and make it appropriate after that. So I'll add that one there. Uh, now, this one here, I actually want that one to be um, horizontal too. I could do that and click on that and make that horizontal. You'll see we get the we get the sign there. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick undo. Um, of course, we could also go in and say we want it to be parallel with something that is already horizontal. So that would be same result, 
right? Just two different kind of like rules. If we decided to change the angle on this one, that one will follow, right? Because it's parallel to this one versus a standard horizontal. So just some of these uh, things to, uh, to think about. Another one I like to use is the collinear. Collinear, I think that's how you say it. Two lines on top of each other, really. That's how I think of it. So if I take this line and I make it collinear, however you pronounce it, <laughs> it's not my language, just trying to use it. Uh, if I select that and I make it down and I click this line down here, whoops, this line down here, they are now like right on top of each other or at least kind of like following each other's path, I should say. So collinear is another one I use uh, quite a bit. All right. Now we still have a couple of things we got to control on uh, this area right here. Um, so another one you could go in and use for, for this one here is there's an equal length. So if we go in here and say, I want equal, I want this line and this line to be equal. These two lines will uh, now be, be, be equal now, but that means they will always stay equal. Maybe they will, you know, but they will go away from each other. What might not be your intent? By the way, remember, you can always go in and click on a relationship here in the sketch environment, hit delete, and it's gone. So you can delete them again. So here you might also say, you know what, I'm going to use the parallel again. Go ahead and select that. And now it's parallel. So now with parallel, they can't go away from each other, right? Uh, now they will always... Uh, stay stay parallel like that. So think a little bit about uh, the different relationships that uh, you kind of have in here. And if we just quickly run over uh, the relationships, we will see this relationship here is a horizontal. Then if you click on it, it will actually highlight the other one. And this was a, a parallel between this line and this line. This one is a collinear between these two lines. These two are parallel. We just added those. And then this one is another horizontal line. So by looking at your sketches, oh, and then this one over here, what is that one? A little crooked T or hockey stick or whatever it is. Well, if you look over here, you can see the symbol. That line is perpendicular. Okay, so that was one of the constraints that Fusion put in. Okay, so... So I hope that that kind of makes sense, that you can actually look at these constraints and figure out kind of how, how they work. Now, you can't, do, you can't do everything with just constraints. At some point, you got to go to dimensions. But if you put as many constraints in in the beginning, your, your sketch is going to be a lot less crowded. Um, what's going to make it easier to change them later on or if uh, you got to hand them off to somebody that there's less dimensions. So let's finish this one up with putting some dimensions on it. So I'm going to hit D for dimension, D Dennis for dimensions, and we get the little sketch icon. And now we can kind of like start applying some of the different dimensions. So I'm going first constraints, then dimensions. So we can click on these two lines and we can apply some kind of an angle here. Let's make that 60. What well, means this one is 62, right? Because we... Uh, we kind of like are running this um, with a uh, with an angle, so 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 these two are kind of like following uh, along right here. Now um, the other one up here, we can go from the top up here, and we can go down and place that to the origin, right? So that will be now we are tying this into to the origin it might be be nice. So I'm just gonna make it. 45 right there. Um, use the origin to kind of like tie your dimensions to if you're making sure that you're placing them uh, just right. So I'm going to place another one to the end here. And let's just make this one 200. And as I'm doing this, you will see things start turning black, but some of it still is blue. What means that if it's still blue, that it's not fully defined. Now, if you're not sure what that is, the easiest thing is to, I'm just going to hit escape to get out of the dimensioning tool, to go and grab a corner, hold down your left mouse button and start moving uh, the corners. And you can kind of like get an idea about what maybe is missing here. 
So in this one, we never place the A with. So let's just D for that, and we can place a, a, a width of this, so 45. Now that turned out, but it's still blue. Well, do you know what's, what's wrong? Oh, the whole thing can still move right here. So let's just place another dimension from the origin to, uh, to this point, right? And we can make that uh, 90, and now you will see that that turns black. So make sure you tie things down. Now again, this one is still blue up here because we didn't give it that height. So make sure you do that. So first off is to apply, well, always make sure that you do your first sketch to the origin. Second, make sure that if you have any tangencies that you use to make sure you have a tangent constraint on them and then put in as many constraints as you can uh, oh, that makes sense and then use dimensions in the end so you can kind of like uh, tie tie it down to whatever you want now to do a couple of more I think kind of important things in here um, let's go in and add a couple of circles so I'm gonna hit C uh, for circles I'm just gonna place two circles and again many times right now I could I could type in right now um, the diameter of the circle. Actually, honestly, and I, this is not best practices, I have a tendency, if I know I need to place two circles in here, I place the two circles first. And then I hit D for dimension and go in and apply whatever diameter I want that circle to be. Another uh, tool I use, a, another constraint I use a lot, especially with circles, is the equal uh, amount down here. So an equal constraint between these two will now make sure that they both are 25, right? You change this to 50 and the other circle goes with it. Now, these are still uh, blue, both of them, because they're kind of like just floating uh, around in space. Uh, so here I might use a horizontal environment between this center point and this center point and now at least I made sure that the two circles are traveling on kind of like the same, uh, the same line here. Then when we have done that, we might start uh, dimensioning them. Now we could go in here and hit D for dimension. So like this center point and this center point, and let's make them 125 from center to center, right? Now, a newer option that uh, was applied inside of Fusion recently is if you right click, I'm in the dimension tool, look at the icon, it's important, right click, you can choose for the dimension not to be as an arc center, but as an arc tangent. So, if, so just by right clicking, I can switch to tangency, and now you will see that it actually finds tangency on this circle to this circle and it will place a tan the tangent between the two. So this is the inside, what is all great. Um, but what if, let's go back into the dimension tool. Oops, D for dimension. What if I want the outside? Well, then you just gotta pick on the outside and Fusion is smart enough to know that if you're picking on the outside, it becomes the outside. If you, if you click on the inside of one and on the outside of the other, that is going to be tangency there. So it has some intelligence uh, to it. Now, when I click to place this sketch, something's going to happen that some of you guys are going to be uh, all too familiar with. Because I already placed the 125 up here, and when I place the 125 here, something's gonna happen. I'm gonna get a notification. It's not a warning, Nothing, nothing's gonna blow up. Like, only if Fusion starts counting down from 10, you run away, <laughs> if it, you know. This is just a notification that adding this dimension will over constrain the sketch. Choose, o uh, choose okay to create a driven Dimension and many people here panic is like what's wrong what means is when I hit okay Is that it's just saying that you already placed 
the 125 from center to center, that's going to drive uh, that width by placing the second dimension. You're just, it's more of a reference dimension. Okay. And you will see that it's in brackets, what means that it's not really, you can't really drive it, but you can use it many times as a reference. Um, if you watched yesterday's furniture build, um, that could be a perfect example where you use something like this. Maybe, you know, because if I go in here, D for dimension, and right click tangency, and let's go back to that inside tangency right there, right? That's the, the 25, and say, okay, it's okay. It's just a, a driven dimension. I have the 125, and you're saying, well, why would you ever need the 75? Well, maybe I have some, I need to put some piece of electronic in here or something, and I need to keep an eye that this one doesn't exceed uh, or becomes too small. Because if I change these di uh, diameters to 80, that will change that. So it's more of a reference dimension than it is um, a, what is called a driving dimension. However, you can absolutely right click on it and you can toggle it to be driving. Now, if you do that, you will see we get an error down here because it says I can't do that because the other one is still there. It's still overwritten. So if we took this one and right clicked on that one, and say toggle driving, now none of them are driving. Right click this one, toggle driving, now suddenly this is the dimension that controls uh, these circles. So I hope that this kind of helps some of you guys uh, with this. I'm gonna wrap it up with uh, kind of like the last thing uh, I wanted to show, another constraint I use quite a bit, and that is the symmetry here. Now to use the symmetry, I will create a helping line and I will just going to place it right on the midpoint of this line. And I know the midpoint because I get a triangle. Somebody's like, who came up with a triangle? Well, if you go over and look over here in the constraints dialog, midpoint infusion is a triangle. So if I hover over here, when I see the triangle, I know I'm at the midpoint. I'm just going to draw the line down to no specific length and place it, okay? So this line here right now is just a reference. Now, in the past, many times you will see that I would turn this into a construction geometry. Right up here, you can turn something into construction geometry. What I do recommend you do, especially if you gotta share uh, this model with somebody else, because it, construction geometry just tells you that it's kind of reference so to use the symmetry, I'm going to select symmetry, and the trick with symmetry is two points and then a line. So this point, this point, and then our helping line right here, and that is now symmetrical. What means that if we're changing this new driven value, they will always be symmetrical to this line here. It is important, though, that I say that in Fusion, you don't have to create, this don't have to be a construction line. We could actually turn it into a, um, a standard line, like a solid line, like we normally use sketch lines, and it will actually still work inside of Fusion. Um, so if you're just modeling for yourself, then you don't always have to, to make it into con to a, a construction. But if you are sharing it with somebody, I'll probably do it just to not con confuse them. Last thing we need here is a uh, vertical dimension. So we're going to D for dimension. And I'm going to select our origin and up to here and just place this, I don't know, whatever. Now, because I left this as a solid line here, when I go in to press Q for press pull, it will divide it up. But, you know, I can just select those two uh, sections right there and then um, we can we can create uh, that here. All right. That was the 30, 30 minutes 
um, <laughs> how I use sketch constraints um, and dimension. One last thing um, that I sometimes get asked is, would I prefer, going in and edit our original sketch, to add fillets in the sketch environment? So I could actually go in here and say, I wanna add a fillet in here like this, let's leave it at 10. All, let's get out of the sketch. All, do I prefer to go up to modify and use the fill it command outside in here? We could make that 10. Really, same result, just two different ways. One is hidden inside the sketch, like there. The other one is sitting as its own feature. My rule of thumb is that if I know that nobody should ever go in and mess around with a radius, I prefer to put it in the sketch. Um, you know, if I model something up and I know that that radius has to be this, nobody's gonna ever experiment with it, I would leave it inside of the sketch. But many times when you're out at a customer, the customer is like, eh, could we make that fill it, you know, how about if we made it a little bit bigger? And then it's a lot easier to have it as a feature out here than have to go back in the sketch. And every time you edit sketch, I feel it's a little dangerous when you go in here, you know, it's easier in here to, to make mistakes um, than I feel like it is uh, out here with, with features. 166 people in the live stream today. Wow. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate that. Really awesome. You guys are awesome. That was what about plan to show today. Tomorrow, Friday, same time, same channel, uh, it is cam. We're gonna talk about when uh, your cam is flashing red at you. So that's tomorrow. Uh, what else should I tell you? I don't know, man. Hope you, hope you are finding uh, a good new way into the new year. Hope you've had an awesome couple of days and um, Thank you so much. I'm going to do what I normally do in the broadcast. If you're watching the recording, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Don't forget, if you have any comments to the sketching, put it down in the comments area. And if you like this, thumbs up. If you don't, be honest, thumbs down. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. All right, shut down. That's it. Um, hope to see you tomorrow. And for you guys who are in the live stream, I'll go in and say hi to you guys. Take care, folks.